All right, let's dive into a story that is just classic home lab. You know, one of those tech experiments that pretty much everyone tells you is a terrible idea, but it's just so tempting, you gotta try it anyway. We're talking about virtualizing TrueNAS on Proxmox, a huge gamble that promises this super clean, consolidated setup, but only if you can actually pull it off. And this quote, man, it just nails the whole spirit of what we're talking about today. See, this isn't about just following the instruction manual to get the most stable by the book server. Nah, it's about the journey, right? The experimentation and that deep, deep satisfaction you get from making a system that is totally, uniquely yours, even if it means breaking a few rules to get there. So here's the mission if you choose to accept it. Take TrueNAS, this powerhouse storage OS that's really built to run on bare metal hardware, and cram it into a virtual machine inside Proxmox. The goal? Simple. Consolidate your hardware, make your server rack just a little bit tidier. The problem? Well, a quick search online and you'll find the entire internet screaming, don't you dare do it. But, you know, that just makes it all the more interesting, doesn't it? Now, on paper, the first attempt looked, well, it looked perfect. The disks were passed through directly to the VM. Specific performance tweaks like I.O. threads were switched on. Potentially problematic stuff like the disk cache turned off. I mean, every single step was taken to give that TrueNAS VM as much raw, direct access to the hardware as possible it really seemed like all the boxes were ticked. And for a little while, it felt like a total victory. The system booted up, the storage pools spun into life, data was moving back and forth. It was that beautiful, quiet period where you kind of lean back in your chair and think, huh, I actually did it. I outsmarted all the naysayers. The gamble, it seemed, was paying off big time. But you know how these stories go. That calm didn't last long. Pretty soon, these weird, mysterious, and persistent problems started creeping in. And that initial success? It just shattered, turning this dream setup into a total troubleshooting nightmare. So you're probably wondering, how bad did it actually get? Well, this bad. Six. The ZFS storage pool had to be completely rebuilt six times in a single month. Now to put that into perspective, a healthy, stable system might go a year or more without a single rebuild. This wasn't just a minor glitch. This was a full-blown five-alarm fire screaming that the data was in serious, serious danger. So, in classic home lab fashion, the first thing you blame is the hardware, right? So, new drives got swapped in, then brand new cables, but the errors just kept coming back. This whole process of elimination was actually super important because it proved that the physical gear was fine. And that just deepened the mystery and pointed a big flashing arrow right at the virtualization setup itself. And this, this was the turning point, the moment of truth. Fed up with the constant problems, our tinkerer ran a decisive test. They moved the drives out of the TrueNAS VM and just plugged them directly into the Proxmox host, running ZFS natively. The result, it was night and day. On the left, you've got the gamble with constant errors and risk. And on the right, the safe bet, which ran, well, smooth as butter. For a whole month, not a single error, not one crash. This was the smoking gun. It proved definitively that the hardware was solid. It was the virtualization layer that was causing all the chaos. So what on earth was actually going on under the hood? This is where the story gets really cool because the community jumped in and other users started chiming in with their experiences to help crack the case and unravel this whole digital mystery. Okay, culprit number one is a classic pitfall. It's known as ZFS on ZFS. Now this happens if your Proxmox host is already using ZFS for its own storage, and then you create a virtual disk on that storage for your TrueNAS VM, which also uses ZFS. Someone in the community described it perfectly. It's like putting a race car engine in a boat. The two systems just end up fighting each other. Every single write has to go through two layers of integrity checks and caching, and it just becomes a recipe for terrible performance and, you guessed it, instability. The second piece of the puzzle was all about access. See, just passing through individual disks to the VM, it isn't enough. ZFS is, well, it's picky. It wants deep, raw, bare metal control over the entire drive. And the only proper way to give it that in a virtual world is with something called HBA pass-through. That's where you take the entire storage controller card, the HBA, and you hand it over exclusively to the TrueNAS VM. It basically bypasses the host entirely, giving TrueNAS the direct line it craves. And finally, we have the sneakiest problem of them all, memory ballooning. 
TrueNAS absolutely loves RAM. It uses it as a super fast cache for data. Now imagine Proxmox, the host, gets really busy. It might decide it needs some memory back, so it just reaches into the TrueNAS VM and reclaims some RAM. To TrueNAS, which might be in the middle of a write operation, this sudden loss of memory looks exactly like a disk has just failed. So it panics and throws an error, starting that whole horrible resilver process all over again. So after hearing all that, you're probably thinking the only sane answer is just don't do it. But what if you're a rebel? What if you heard all the warnings and you still want to try? Well, armed with all this new knowledge, there is a way to attempt this gamble and actually minimize the risk. So let's walk through the guide for doing it the wrong way, the right way. All right, here it is, the Rebel's Guide. Step one, and this is absolutely non-negotiable, you have to use a dedicated HBA card in pass-through mode. Give TrueNAS its own controller. Second, make sure you are not, under any circumstances, layering ZFS on ZFS. Third, go into the VM settings and disable memory ballooning. Stop the host from yanking memory away and causing those panics. Fourth, let TrueNAS handle its own jobs, like snapshots, and keep the jobs on the host to a minimum. Fifth, keep an eye on your HBA temperatures. Those things can get hot. And finally, maybe the most important rule of all, be ready to bail. Have an exit strategy. If the system starts acting up, you need a plan to get your data out safely. You know, this whole journey, from the terrible idea to the troubleshooting nightmare to the eventual solution, it really highlights something special about the home lab spirit. It's not just about building something that works, it's about pushing the limits to see how far you can bend a system before it finally breaks. And let's be real for a second, is running TrueNAS in a VM ever gonna be as perfectly stable as running it on bare metal? Mm, probably not. There are always gonna be those extra layers of complexity, those extra potential points of failure. But for a true tinkerer, perfection isn't really the main goal anyway. The real win, the real prize, is everything you gain along the way. It's that incredible level of control you get over every piece of your hardware. It's the freedom to experiment and try crazy things. But most important of all, it's gaining this profound, deep understanding of how your system actually works, an understanding you could never, ever get from just following a step-by-step -step guide. That's the real treasure here. So, I'll just leave you with this question. The next time you start a project, ask yourself, what are you really chasing here? Is it a flawless, perfect, by-the-book system, or is it the deep, hard-won understanding that you can only get from the messy, frustrating, and beautiful process of building it yourself? Thanks for tuning in.